Have you ever been playing Call of Duty Zombies and you get really, really good box luck? In this footage here, I got the Apothecan Servant, then the Thunder Gun, then the Ragnaroks, then the Lil Arnies on my first four box hits. Now that was incredibly lucky. Well, actually, this was using a patch that would give me those four weapons as my first four box hits. But what are the odds of getting Wonder Weapons out of the box, like the Ray Gun? Well, I wanted to test it for myself. There's a lot of misinformation out there about the actual odds of pulling different weapons in Call of Duty Zombies. Many people believe that really strong weapons like the Ray Gun and certain Wonder Weapons are the most rare weapons to be pulled, and weaker weapons are most common to be pulled. This person here explains that pistols and snipers are the most common weapons and LMGs are the rarest weapons. This person insists that all normal weapons have the exact same odds of being pulled, but wonder weapons have a slightly lower chance than being pulled than all the other weapons. And this post even goes as far to say that wonder weapons have a 20% chance of being pulled any time after round 10. Well, I'm here to set the record straight. I personally believe that every single weapon in the box has an identical chance of being pulled, meaning every single weapon, including Wonder Weapons, are all equally likely, and the weapon you end up getting is 100% random. So I decided to go in-game to test this myself. What I decided to do was load up a game using the Strat Tester mod. The Strat Tester mod does not affect any of the odds of getting any weapon out of the box. However, it does spawn you in with 500,000 points, so I could easily locate the box and then just spend my entire time hitting the box until all of my points are gone, recording all of the results. I decided to load into Call of the Dead and do exactly this. And the reason why I chose Call of the Dead specifically is because it has two wonder weapons, the VR-11 and the Scavenger, plus the Ray Gun so we could truly see if there is any waiting towards or away from Wonder Weapons or any of the other weapon classes. Additionally, for the purpose of this test, I decided to give myself the Matryoshka dolls before hitting the box. They obviously are gonna have slightly different odds just because you can only get them once and you can never trade them out. Now I want to make it clear that I wasn't holding onto any weapons in the box, so every single weapon was available to me. Additionally, I did not go into the code and change any of the odds. However, I did disable teddy bears from being able to spawn, simply because I wanted to see the odds of truly the weapons and not have any interference. On Call of the Dead, there are 24 things that you can get out of the box. 23 weapons plus the Matryoshka dolls. So, with only the 23 weapons in the box remaining, there should be a 1 in 23 chance of any single weapon, including the Wonder Weapons, coming out of the box. I'm speeding up the footage here, but this program that you can see on screen is counting the number of box hits and the amount of box hits it takes for every weapon to come out. That's what you can see those averages are. I decided to hit the box a total of 5,240 times. The idea is, Obviously, in the short term, if something is random, anything could happen. It's totally possible to get the ray gun three times in the row, or to get the scavenger and the VR-11 a bunch of times, or in some cases to get really bad weapons over and over again. But the more data that you have, the more likely it will tend towards the actual true averages. If every single weapon in the box is truly random, then that means that there should be a 1 in 23 chance of receiving any of the weapons. Well, here are the results. After hitting the box 5,240 times, these are the number of times I received every single weapon in the box. The two columns to the right show the observed probability of receiving each weapon based on the number of times I received the weapon out of the 5,240 box hits. Now, if the assumption was that every single weapon has an equal chance, so there's a 1 in 23 chance of every weapon appearing, then this is the expected probability of all of those weapons appearing. And this is the difference between the expected probability versus the observed probability. Every single weapon fell within 0.5% or less of the expected probability. If we were to average up all of the probabilities of every given weapon, we find that it is 0.003% off 
from the actual true probability of 1 in 23. So yeah, it is safe to say that at least on Call of the Dead, every single weapon has the exact same odds of being pulled. But I wanted to verify even more, so I decided to look into the decompiled scripts for Black Ops 1 to see if there was anything specific about the way that the box functions. When I did look through the scripts, I was actually surprised that there is a little bit of waiting in the box, but not in the way that most people think. For some reason, in the scripts, there is actually extra weight given to specifically the Wonder Waff, and only the Wonder Waff as far as Wonder Weapons go. According to this, the odds of getting the Wonder Waff increase to about 15% after round 5, and 20% after round 10, which is actually a significant difference. It means that the Wonder Waff is by far the most common weapon to get out of the box on Duris. Now, there is one more weapon that also gets special weighting in the mystery box, and that is the monkey bombs. Basically, the monkey bombs are weighted such that they are three times as likely to come out as any other weapon in the box, until at least one player receives them. Then, for all other players, they go back to the default weight. If the round number is greater than 10 and nobody has received them, then they are five times as likely to come out of the box compared to any other weapon. And again, until another player has seen them, in which case they drop back down to the same as every other weapon. Now let me be clear that this special weight that I see here only affects the monkey bombs and does not affect any other wonder equipment, including the dolls, the Gersh's, or the QEDs. Through the rest of my inspection, I couldn't find any other Black Ops 1 weapons that had any different probabilities other than being purely random. Black Ops 2 also uses almost exactly the same AI for the box as Black Ops 1 does. Believe it or not, the script that specifies that the Wonder Waff should be more common than the rest of the weapons also exists on Black Ops 2, even though none of the maps actually have the Wonder Waff at all. Now, I personally couldn't find anything specific about the Raygun Mark II, which is, for sure, the most rare weapon on every map that isn't buried. Although, from asking around to a few close friends that know a lot about the game, it's believed that the Raygun Mark II has a 1% chance of coming out of the box at any given time, while the rest of the 99% chance is split evenly among every other weapon in the box. The only exception is with the Teddy Bear Permaperk. This does actually change a lot of the probabilities of the box, but it doesn't work in the way that most people think. I got this information from the Zombies Iceberg that Furret uploaded recently. I highly recommend you check that out if you have about 5 hours. When the Teddy Bear Permaperk is active, there's a 60% chance it will choose a weapon from the Teddy Bear Permaperk list of weapons, and a 40% chance it will choose a completely random weapon. The Teddy Bear Permaperk list of weapons can be found by looking in the iceberg, and I'll leave a specific timestamp down in the description if you want to learn more. As for Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4, both of those games use identical scripts for how the box works. And after looking through the scripts, I don't see anything specific about any weights towards specific weapons, so I do believe that all of the weapons are truly random once again. Believe it or not, a lot of the code for Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4 is actually borrowed from Black Ops 2. I was actually able to find scripts in both Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4 that specify what the box should do when it's hit with an EMP, which is something that's only possible on Black Ops 2. But there's nothing specific related to any of the odds of getting weapons in either of those games. Now, as for Cold War, I truly don't know enough about that game to tell you how the box works. Obviously, it is definitely intended that there are separate odds for each of the weapon classes and weapon rarities on that game, but I'm going to leave that for somebody else to research in the future. The point is, I believe that I can conclusively say that on Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, and Black Ops 4, every single weapon has the exact same odds of being pulled, regardless of weapon class, regardless of whether or not it is a wonder weapon. The only notable exceptions are the Wonder Waff on Black Ops 1 Darice, the Monkey Bombs on certain maps that they are on, the Raygun Mark II on every map except for Buried, 
and when the teddy bear perma perk is active. Those are the only times that the weapon odds actually do change. The best part about doing research like this is I really want to encourage you guys watching this to test this on your own. Did I do something wrong? Please let me know, because I would really love to update this video if I am actually wrong. Or if I'm correct, you can see for yourself. I've left all of the data that I found down in the description, as well as link to all the scripts, as well as the programs that I use to help me collect this data. And regardless, I hope that you learned something this video. And if not, I do hope that you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching so much. I'll be uploading even more soon, and I'll see you soon.